that free versions of all my videos are available on PeerTube. I promised your garden tour, so I guess let's do an August garden tour. Today is August 5th and it's looking really nice out today, so let's do a garden tour in nice weather. The blueberries are looking good. They aren't looking as good as the one at home, but still looking good. The Papaya fig, one of the two I can't remember, is looking good too. And in here is looking awesome. And look at that. 116 August Garden Tour, August 5, 2024. With all the tomatoes outside doing so badly, it's really good to see the indoor tomatoes doing well. The other side tomatoes are also looking really good. They have the first flowers and they are ranking up the trellises, so everything's fine. The cucumber is requesting some love, but I think it's fine. I added some compost for more nutrients and I'll be adding some more fertilizer, but yeah, looking good. We've also got the melon down there. And so many flowers. Okay, tomatoes are looking good. Flowers on the tomatoes and back there, all the melons are looking great as well. The only thing that's looking a little worse for wear is the cucumber, but we'll get her some nutrients soon. I already added some compost. With all the outside tomatoes looking so bad, I am so glad that the tomatoes in here are looking good. Let me just grab the water. And I'm so happy that at least the greenhouse tomatoes are surviving. And I think the ones outside are recovering and it's not supposed to rain again for a couple of days. So I am hopeful. What are you doing? Are you checking on your carrots? Which are looking great. Look at that. The corn's looking good as well. It's actually making me very happy that all the plants are looking good. And I think we found the one that's a different kind because one's a little bit red and we had one or two of the green and everything else was black corn. And just look at that. Some of them are also doing the three sisters thing. There's a squash down there. There's a bean, another, there's a bean. There's a bean down there, there's a squash, which is covering the ground a bit. Another bean back there. The tiny little corn's not gonna make it, but that's fine. And there is a bean going all the way up and even through this corn. Just, just look at it. The zucchini I never wanted to plant is doing good as well. Um, it was meant for the pigs, but now there's no more pigs, so I guess we have a zucchini squash. TP beans? Oh, my shade's in it. The climbing beans are climbing and climbing and climbing, just going everywhere. <laughs> yes, ladies. Everywhere. The other day I made more potato beds, so there is a bed of potatoes down here and a bed of potatoes in the middle of the garden over here. And I'm really happy that they are in because I really, really would like to harvest them this year. But the later we are, the more likely they are going to be seed potatoes for next year. But that's a very good plan B. If these potatoes don't mature to the degree we want, we'll just leave them in the ground and dig them up in the spring as seed potatoes for the new potato beds. And I'm really excited either way. I don't care if we get them this year, we have a lot of potatoes, but making seed potatoes is always a good thing. Okay. Pepper, what are you doing again? What are you doing? Did you find a tomato? Yeah, you did. Yeah, the tomatoes are looking meh. I, they're very mixed, but I am very hopeful because while there are still areas that are looking really bad, there is also areas with just fresh green growth and flowers. 
So I am kind of hopeful. Also, look at that ginormous clover. Isn't it awesome? I don't know why the geese are yelling at me, but the geese are yelling at me. Over here, we have some horseradish, with, which is looking good. It is standing up really, really well to everything. We have some damage on the leaves, but that's totally fine. I don't want to eat the leaves. I want to eat the root. So they are looking good. I'm very happy with them. And now to one of my favorite plants, and I don't even know what it is, but look at this monster. There is a yellow squash of some kind. Hold on, let me find a fruit there. Here, look at that. We've got a fruit here. I don't, oh, there's a bigger one. That might be better. Um, There we go, back there. I did accidentally break one off earlier because it was stuck between the trellis and the plant, but there's plenty and we don't even know what they are yet. We'll find out. I took the one that broke off home to hopefully get an ID, but I think they are some kind of squash, not a zucchini or courgette or something. <laughs> Why are you yelling? Okay, the bloody butcher is doing well. All the outer leaves are green and actually producing flowers and fruit that are not dying. And I know the ground looks like a disaster, but it is there. This thing is not looking very good. I bought it as a plant at the store, just like this one over here. Um, but this one's looking good. This one's a happy plant. It's fine. It's also given us some fruit. This, not so much. I don't know what's wrong with it, but the third one that I got at the same time is looking even worse. I don't even know if it's still alive. We're gonna see. Okay, first, more tomatoes. Here is another, I think it's a Tarasenko. Um, and this one's actually looking pretty well. There's a lot of green foliage on it and little brown foliage, so I'm hopeful. There's also these over here. I have no idea what they are, but they're going up the trellis and there is new growth everywhere that does not seem to be affected. So hopefully I've saved them. <gasps> Look! Hello, little friend. Look at her go. Some of the sunflowers are now actually as tall as me. Some are, I think, taller than me, unless we count my hair as me. Um, they are making me very happy. I really can't wait to see the red velvet ones. The velvet queen, I think the variety was called. But they are almost open and they're going to be here soon. In the meantime, there is plenty of yellow sunflowers. The Tamino and the regular, just standard ones are looking great. I mean, just... Look at all these beauties. They are everywhere and they are making me so happy. This one has little droplets of sticky on it. I haven't touched it yet, but I really, really want to. I think it's all nectar and I really envy the bees that get to eat that because that looks delicious. But soon, very, very soon, these are going to open up and they are velvet queens. So they should be red and I'm very excited. But let's finish the tomato. Okay, now to the worst part of the tomatoes. Let's find a path in here through the sunflowers. This part looks like a disaster. That's all that's left of this one plant. You've got these pieces that really look badly, but even here we've got some come on camera. New growth over here. And we've got new growth up there. And I think even that one might make it, but we'll see. Then we've got this one, which I don't know which one it is, but it's a plum tomato. And again, the ground's covered in fruit that we lost. But there is hope. There is hope. Okay, let's see. <sighs> let's go around here to the last of them. There we go. Okay, last one. Nope, actually, there's another one over there. Everywhere, same story. The ground is covered in dead fruit. 
but there is life at the top. Remember the one I just told you? I didn't know if it made it. It actually got a fruit. It just it didn't just survive despite losing all of the lower leaves. It actually managed to make a little pepper. The pepper plant over here is El oh, Pepper Dagab the Mulch. Let's restore that real quick. There we go. Uh, this one's making me really happy because it's an elephant chili, which means big fruit. And they're all looking healthy. And I think this one's just going to produce for us. There's another little one over there. I'll show you in a second. And here we've got our tiny Leela Lucy. That thing last year gave us so many fruits, so I'm hopeful that it will be as, as producing, that's not the word I'm looking for, but you know what I mean, as prolific as last year. Anyway, let me show you the rest of the There we go, the Lila Lucy, there's some flower, uh, some fruit in there, and the really cool thing is that purple is the first color, and then they turn white, and then they go through all the stages of orange and red. And that's the second elephant chili. There's only one fruit on there at the moment, but over here, the other one has a lot of fruit already on it. We've got some beans over here, some weeds over here, and a big bean growing up the single stick that really needs another trellis. More weeds. Goodbye, horsetail. Goodbye, horsetail. Goodbye. Okay, we've got this tomato over here, which was also affected by blight, but it seems to be doing better now. Let's hope it makes it. Ah, uh, more horsetail. More horsetail. Always more horsetail. It's okay. This one's really not doing well. It has a flower, like there's a single flower on there but it's not doing well. What's doing well is horsetail. Horsetail, so much horsetail. But we've got another tomato over here. It's one of the other rescues that I put in after I put in the main tomatoes. And this one's looking like it might actually produce some fruit that are not blighted. So I'm very hopeful there. For this one, this one's not looking as good, but it also seems to be recovering. Same for this beauty and this beauty. Now to one of my favorite things at the moment, which is these struggling, but they're going to make it bean plants, which are fighting against yet more horsetail everywhere. I've pulled so many horsetail pieces out of this bed, but that's okay. That's okay. We've got this. But there are so many pretty bean plants over here. And they are all the same as this one. Just that this one has a long way ahead of the others. But this one's been pretty good at giving us beans. And if all of these around it mature at the same time, we might actually be able to do something with beans. Look at it. The thing that's really exciting is that while I planted the sunflowers for next year's peas, the peas that are in here are actually producing and climbing up the sunflowers in some cases. Not that one though, but let me show you how cool they look. I got an actual harvest of peas this morning. And some of them actually make their way up the sunflowers, which is really exciting. We're going to ignore this weedy path and the trash and go over here where we've got another one climbing up a sunflower. And the plan is, let me get back out of here, that we actually just leave the sunflowers in at the end of the season. So we won't be digging them up. We won't be removing the stems or anything. We'll just leave them be. And then hopefully they will work as well as last year's. Because I've got some sunflower stalks here, there, there there that were there left by the previous owner and they'd be supporting peas no problem so I'm kind of hopeful anyway I think we've seen it all oh right the mushroom beds and the potato beds there's still nothing to see in the mushrooms but 
It said that it would take a while, so I'm kind of hoping that it'll work out in the end. That would be really neat. Nothing so far. That's going to be a bed at some point. And the potato bed. That... Let's check on the rest of the potato beds. We've got the beds over here. And some of them are empty, some of them are not. This one needs to be harvested soon. That's early potatoes. They're done and I've already capped them. And they are ready to be taken out. This is empty and just sitting there with straw. Hi, Pepper. Hi. Are you on top of my seedlings again? Go away. Pepper, move. And where Pepper is just jumping around, we've got some beets. There, everywhere. Over here. And over here with the ants. Hi, ants. And they are Vintazana beets, rainbow chard, and cha-cha beets, or however you pronounce that. This bed has potatoes in it. Oh yeah, and the back half of this is still potatoes that need to be dug up at some point, but not yet. This thing is empty, I believe, and just sitting there. No, it's not. It's not empty. It still has to be harvested. This is empty because I've already replanted it. Where Pepper's currently standing is where his carrots are hopefully growing. And then we've got Salsify back there. I've also plotted some Pastinaco, but I need to look up what that is in English and I'll put it on the screen somewhere. And then the last two potato beds over here. One of them is early potatoes that need to come out soon. And one of them is our latest potatoes, the ones that should be in the longest. So we're hoping that we can leave them in a while longer, but all of them have been capped. So at the max, we've got a couple of weeks and then all of them have to come out. But we're hoping that the skin will toughen up a little bit. Anyway, yeah, we're back at the greenhouse. So let me water the plants and get home. So long and thanks for being here. If you want to support the channel and help me make these videos, go to rootsandcalluses.com support.